That's right. I have a jetpack. I can fly much, much worse than my bees now. Except it is the most flammable of jetpacks, the wood jetpack. Not the wisest of choices I have made. Hello everybody, I'm Arden. Welcome to another episode of All the Mods 8. And today we're going to continue on with my bees. And as you can see, I have made quite a bit of progress today. And I wasn't just wearing the jetpack to show off that jetpacks are easy to obtain and easy to flex, but to show that I have made some actual infrastructure that we're going to be use, needing to use today. Because back over here by my other random machines and stuff that I've made, I now have the power centrifuge and a honey generator. Well, as well as a tinker's workbench strictly to recharge the jetpack. As well as the copy-paste gadget that I've been using to add on to my bee huts because this made things a lot easier to work with. But I mostly use this to test this out to make sure that the, I knew how to centrifuge and everything worked. And the centrifuge makes wax out of honeycombs as well as liquid honey, which we are piping down into the honey generator which eats up all that honey and turns it into delicious, delicious power, although it's currently all currently in use. Turns out that the centrifuge is actually net power positive with the generator, so we're actually in a pretty good place for that. This all proves that it all works and that we don't have any problems getting them stuck in and out of it. So that will be useful today because today it's infrastructure week at the beehive because we need to get a way to get all of the combs we're getting out of all of these hives out of here and into a production pipeline oh and i forgot to mention what i've got on this other side here are the start of all of the ore bees i mean so we've got some aluminum some copper and some iron going on in here so far so i've already started well down on the road of infinite metals so we're getting some good progress going on so far i need to add a whole bunch more on here but i figured we should start with how i'm going to deal with the infrastructure because folks we are not just going to use pipes today or a2 or refined storage or any of the other really obvious and much simpler solutions because we're going straight to awesome this time because this pack has a mod called little logistics because why use pipes when we can use little toy trains to move things around and they use the crate style ponder to tell you how it works. But basically you can set up a means to stop train periodically and offload it via its own hopper system. It's actually pretty neat. And you can see the train rolling in, stopping here and offloading its carts via the hopper right there. Now there is one big huge caveat because I haven't tested this and I did read a bug report that their uh, hoppers for loading and unloading might actually be broken. So that's gonna be really unfortunate and might ruin this whole episode. I hope the thumbnail doesn't get spoil that one right now. But uh, let's take a look at what we need to do. Cause we're gonna need a train and I think we're gonna use the energy locomotive, which looks like a cute little diesel train. And it's all, not all that complicated, especially since we have infinite iron at this point. The main thing is we need a vehicle charger, which mostly requires a bunch of redstone, which we do thankfully have. And it also involves train cars, which are just metal and wood. So far, I think we've got this. We will also need some locomotive docking rails to tell the train to stop, as well as a bog standard activator rail for Minecraft to trigger the hoppers to unload or to load or unload. Well, good news and bad news. The good news is that they're adorable. The bad news is that they're broken and there's a bug report in their GitHub account. So um, let's get into what we can do so far. So the way that these work is that you set it up with a locomotive docking rail and then a train car docking rail. This tells the train to stop and wait for it to unload and this actually tells it to un the car to actually unload. You can use the conductor's wrench to toggle it back and forth between loading and unloading. Loading, the hopper needs to be on the side of it. Unloading, it has to be under it. It must be the little logistics rapid hopper. The problem is that's broken right now. This does not work, unfortunately, in this mod pack. Next to the docking rail, I have a vehicle charger so that we can actually charge up our train. Down here at the other end, I have it set up to another docking rail to tell it to unload the train into this chest, if this worked. To put them down, you can just put them, right click them on the rail like a minecart and put them the wrong way just like I did. Facing the correct direction, we can put down the car and the train. And then we can use a vehicle chain to link them together to make sure that they stay hooked up. From there, with an empty hand, you can right click the train. We can see that it's charged up because it's next to the vehicle charger. We could register it so that it can travel without chunk loaders. There's also a chunk loader car you can put on that will always load three chunks in a radius around the train to keep it up. And then we can tell it to start. And then you can see it goes, and this is just a 
adorable. And then if it had anything to load, it would have stopped there. Instead, it comes back around here, and then it just stops and fails to load anything. It just gets, well, it would have been stuck if there'd been anything in the hopper. So this is all unfortunate. So I guess what we're gonna have to do in the meantime until they fix this, and it's been open for like two months now, is lay out the infrastructure where I'm gonna want to have train tracks, and instead put pipes in. It's trying to make something cool looking and... and uh, all right, so I think I've got a general layout that makes me happy because long term this should look good with trains. But right now I'm just running pipes to the basin here and they're connected up into the beehives here and run back into this new processing cave I've got set up back here. Obviously this is a work in progress because I was still trying to figure out how to get a couple mods that I've never worked with before to work and to make all of this work well. So what I've got is I'm working with the functional storage storage drawers. It's basically a replacement for the 1.12 storage drawers mod and it's it's different enough that it actually confused me for a while to how I was going to lay this out. Because one of the big things it does is it wirelessly transmits to its drawers. So it doesn't need trim to act as pipes or anything, it just has to be linked. And you have these two cards to work with. One's the configuration tool, if you shift right click, it lets you, it acts as the keys from storage drawers where you can lock it, turn on and off the icons and the quantities and whatnot. The other one is the linking tool, which shows you all of the drawers that are linked to the storage controller. You just right click on your controller to tell it the card that's when you want to see. It will show you all the storages that are linked to it. And you can just right click them to add them to the network and it doesn't require any other effort than that. But it helps if you've like loaded it up and locked it beforehand. I should note that this mod did make something come back that I really, really loved from 1.7 from Jabba's Barrels, which was in this case the Ender Drawer, but it was the B Space Barrel upgrade there. This acts kind of like an Ender Chest, where you can put one of these down, load it up with whatever item type that you want, and then put a second copy of it down and link them together, and it's the same drawer in both places, so you can wirelessly transmit that way as well. So it's pretty neat. You can also set up more than one controller in an area and link to different drawers to have multiple networks going. I want to say the range around a controller is uh, eight cubes around it in a radius. So from there, I've got universal pipe cable running into the storage controller, pulling things out of the centrifuges. I'm using that because I have to pull both liquids and items out of it, and I was trying to contain the mess some, but it turns out pipes cannot both insert and extract from the same pipe going in or out of a machine. You know, we come down here, even if you come into its interface here, you can see that we have access to all the types. And even if we were to put in one of the upgrades so that we can modify these bits of it, there's nothing here that lets us do both input and output. So because of how expensive these pipes are, I ended up basically running power behind it to save on that cost as well as having separate input pipes on the top there. This functional storage does have a pusher upgrade that lets you shove things down into an adjacent inventory or in whatever direction based off that, but it it doesn't appear to work with the centrifuges. I couldn't get it to actually transmit out. So from here, we've got honey going into the jumbo storage from mob grinding utils. From there, that goes into the honey generator, which then pulls the power back out and puts it in this battery. I'm probably going to have a problem with this power set generator setup when this battery fills up and this fills up, because once this is full, I don't know if it'll continue burning honey, which means this tank will eventually fill up, fill up which means these centrifuges might eventually stop. So I'm going to have to address that at some point. I also need to upgrade all of these drawers, but I'm kind of resource strapped right now. But we seem to be doing pretty decently. But as an example of how all of this works, we'll put this drawer right here. We will set the configuration card to locking. We will lock the drawer. We'll put some honeycombs in it. And then we will link this to our network. And you'll start seeing it pulling it in from my normal vanilla hives. So while this isn't entirely ideal, this is getting the job done. It's gonna have some cable mess, I'm gonna have trouble hiding because of how face-sided some of this stuff is. I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to do with that cable down there, because you can't connect different pipes cables together, so I couldn't like join it to the yellow input pipe down there, and I certainly don't wanna run ultimate cable all over right now. So yeah, this is gonna be ugly for a bit, and I don't entirely know what I'm gonna to do to fix it. But I'll figure something out, I suppose. Well, before we go for the day, I figured I would go explore some of the other bases in our world and some of the other users. And this here is Wraith. And Wraith 
has been extremely massively productive and tiny. Very, very tiny. A couple of players on our server really like the shrink mod. Um, it's really kind of distressing. But he's already up on the moon. This is a moon base. I'm in an oxygen suit. I'm not going to die. Other because this is this is very terrifying. But this is his base up here. He actually did an amazing job. I really like the colors he used and the purple and the gold and the copper. And it's really nice inside. But we're taking a look up, up here so we can see what it looks like up here on the moon. Because this is my first trip up here. This is with the Ad Astra mod as opposed to Galacticraft or uh, Advanced Rocketry. And there's some neat stuff up there. He said he's found some dungeons and there's some really nasty stuff hidden inside here. Which harkens back to the old Galacticraft type stuff. But um, yeah, it's pretty neat here. He's gone pretty heavy into magic though. Into Hexerai and Ars Nouveau and a few other things. So he's built a little demonic mage tower here up on the moon. I'm impressed. Good job, Wraith. Anyhow, one trip to the moon later, we are now back in the overworld, sitting on top of my bees. And I think now is the time to call it a day. I'll probably keep adding on to the bees as I go on through here. But for now, let's call it a week. If you found this episode interesting or entertaining, please consider the like or subscribe if you're new. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.